Hello and welcome to SNR Tech Bytes. Today I want to show you how to install the Spaghetti Detective on an Unraid server. That way you can use it with any 3D printers on your local network completely free. Okay, so the way we're going to install Spaghetti Detective on Unraid is we're going to jump into our dashboard. We're going to click this button to bring up the terminal. Once we're inside the terminal, we're actually going to copy the lines directly from the Run the Spaghetti Detective on Unraid, which is linked in the description below. So the first line here is to install Docker Compose, and it's also going to set up the um, chmod to run it always. Now, copy-paste sort of works in the web interface, but you have to right-click and click Paste instead of just a general right-click like you do in, in most terminal programs. So we're going to run this. Make sure we get no errors. If you get an error, you might be in the wrong location, you might not have access, you might not be sudo. Make sure you throw that sudo in there correctly. Next line we're going to run is going to be the chmod. Okay, once that's done, we're actually going to go ahead and do a cd to get into whatever directory you want to actually install the spaghetti detective on. I strongly suggest app data. Uh, that's where I'm going to install this one here. So we're going to do cd mnt user app data. Now we're going to copy the git clone command to actually install the spaghetti detective. Now we're going to run docker compose, which we just installed to actually get this set up. And this is going to take a while. So now's a great time to discuss a huge thank you to the spaghetti detective for putting out this awesome guide on how to do it. The Spaghetti Detective typically runs on their own servers and uh, being able to use it by the fact that they made it open source is an awesome opportunity for anybody running an Unraid server or who otherwise has an always on computer. Um, huge thank you to Spaghetti Detective for actually doing this. They're not a sponsor of any kind, but I do want to say thank you very much for making this open source because this is a wonderful program that gives me a lot more confidence in my printer, especially when I'm away or at work, or wherever it happens to be. I can just get an email notification that says, hey, your print's failing, and I can pause it remotely with no issues. Now, one last thing that we need to do is make sure that every time Unraid reboots, for whatever reason, it starts up Docker Compose correctly. Now, this is a bit of a risky command, so we have to be very careful about how we go about doing this. The Spaghetti Detective GitHub has a very good instruction manual on its website, and just copy-paste those lines exactly. We're going to do is go back to our terminal. We're going to nano boot config go. And we need to copy these three lines exactly in. Again, the best thing to do is to copy paste the lines that are on the run TSD on Unraid, which I have linked in the description below. Double check, triple check this because what's going to happen is if any of these commands are wrong, it will not let Unraid as a whole boot, and you're actually going to have to pull out your thumb drive, plug it into a computer, go into this folder, delete the lines or fix the lines, replug the USB stick into your Unraid server, and then restart from there. So make sure this is all correct. Exit out. And once that's done, if we reboot our Unraid server, it will also start up the Docker Compose, which is going to be important for running any commands and making sure that the Spaghetti Detective is running correctly through a reboot. Once that's complete, we're going to open a new tab and then go to our server. Port 3334 admin. Now here the default email is going to be root at example.com. And the password is super secret. We're going to log in, and under Sites, there's only going to be one site here, but it's going to be example.com. So we're going to click this, and we're going to change the domain name from example.com to our server IP address. I haven't done any experimentation. I don't know if Bonjour will work with the Raspberry Pi. I don't believe it does, so make sure you use your correct IP address. Port 3334. Save. Now once we're done here, we can exit out of the admin site, 
And now we're going to go back to the non-admin site, which is going to bring us into the Spaghetti Detective's landing page. Some agreements we have to make here. That's fine. Now we're inside of printers and we're still logged in as root ex at example.com. This is fine. You can log in as a regular user if you want. It's technically more secure, but for purposes of what I'm doing here, I'm just going to maintain it as root. So I'm going to add a printer and I'm going to add my Mark 3s Next, now we have to install the plugin. So we're going to come over to our Mark 3s Going to click settings. We're going to go to plugins. Get more. Spaghetti Detective, because they start with Access Anywhere, they're actually one of the first ones anyway, so you usually don't need to search, but if uh, if they don't show up for some reason, just search Spaghetti Detective. Click Install. This one's kind of a large package, so it does take a moment to install. Okay, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and restart. Now, as soon as we restart, we're going to end up in the Spaghetti, Spaghetti Detective's landing page. We're actually just going to automatically click Finish without touching anything in this setup wizard. Now we're going to go to settings. We're going to scroll down to the spaghetti detective. We're going to click advanced settings. Now for some reason I have a situation where on my server I have to actually go through a restart before it lets me access the advanced settings. I'm assuming that'll be fixed in a later version of spaghetti detective but if that's the case for you as well just exit out of here and send the reboot command. Okay now that we're back we're going to jump back in here go to spaghetti detective click advanced settings now we're actually going to delete this server address and do http colon slash slash and then the IP address of our Unraid server and the Spaghetti Detective port. Click save. Now we're going to go back to the Spaghetti Detective again. And inside of setup, when we go back to the Spaghetti Detective page, we'll click next and we're going to get our super secret code. Obviously this is blurred out to you guys, but click copy, come back over here, put your super secret code in, it should tell you it's valid. If it doesn't tell you it's valid, double check advanced settings to make sure that you have the right IP address set. Uh, these codes do not work on the real Spaghetti Detective port, obviously, so make sure that you actually have the correct IP address in here and make sure the Spaghetti Detective is running correctly on your Unraid server. So we'll click save. Now we're going to come back over to Spaghetti Detective and click next. We should get a Spaghetti Detective plugin is successfully configured. When we click done, we're going to pull into this page. A picture is not going to show up here until you actually start a print. So let's come over here. I'm going to sort by upload date and I'm going to start this conveniently loaded Benchy. And there we go, our first picture in Spaghetti Detective. It is now working, it is now tracking, and it will tell you inside of this web page if a failure happens, and it'll pause your print for you automatically as long as you have that selected down here. Setting up email in the Spaghetti Detective on a local server is a little bit harder, so there's gonna be a few steps we're gonna have to do here. First thing is we're gonna go back to our Unraid server. We're gonna open our terminal again. We're gonna navigate back to the location of where Spaghetti Detective install is. Next, we're going to go ahead and nano docker compose.yml. And inside of here, there's going to be a handful of things we're going to change. So we're going to come down to email host. And I like to use Gmail. So I'm going to go ahead and do smtp.gmail.com. Make sure you put that inside of single quotations. Next email host user, this is going to be your email address. I'm just going to put example in. Next is going to be your password. Now, especially if you have two-factor authentication set up or you just don't want to put your password in a form like this, the best thing to do is to get an app-specific password. Uh, just search on Google how to do a Gmail app-specific password. It'll pull up and it's going to be a 16-character uh, long password. So you type the password in. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is come down to this default from email and change this to, I like to do the same email that I sign in on, then it's just coming from that email. Now we're going to do control X, Y, enter, and now it's written. Okay, once we have all of our email host information, then what we're going to do is run the command as if we were updating the Docker Compose. So that's going to be docker compose up dash D dash dash force dash recreate dash dash build. Once we click enter, it's going to go through and rebuild our Docker. Now this will take a little while, uh, five to 10 minutes. Okay, after the Docker Compose command finishes running, we're going to come back to our landing page for our local spaghetti detective. We're going to come up here and click where the email is. We're going to click preferences, manage email addresses. And then inside of here, we're going to type the email that we want to verify and click add email. As soon as we click add email, it's going to send the verification email to that email. You can click verify as long as you're on your local network with whatever device you're trying to verify with, and it'll verify that email. From then on, it'll send you any email alerts that Spaghetti Detective generates. Okay, and that's how to install the Spaghetti Detective on a local server, which lets you use Spaghetti Detective completely free for your 3D printers.